invite uh, Brandon Spurlock and Chris Lerman up. Lori, if you would like to join us, you'd be welcome to come as well. That's fine. So um, they're here to represent Crew. Uh, they, they both work in the Metro Richmond area. And, uh, you know, I, we've, we've supported them for uh, a while. And um, so at the end of the day, um, what we'd like to do is, is, is kind of talk to them a little bit and learn a, bit, a little bit more about their ministry. So. Okay. Um, Brandon, can you please talk about how much Crew thinks about its mission and strategy for uh, reaching out to the college students? Sure. Well, Crew, Crew was founded nearly 70 years ago uh, with the purpose of uh, helping to fulfill the Great Commission. We, we generally believe that uh, if we can reach the campus today, uh, we can reach the world tomorrow. And so the way, the way that we do that is, is by making disciples. We want to see students who are lost turned into Christ-centered laborers. Uh, we we kind of sum that up in, into three words. It's win, build, and send. Win basically means we want to introduce students or win, or win students to Christ by sharing the gospel with them, by, by welcoming them in, into a community that's genuine, uh, people who are walking with Jesus who will encourage them in their, in their walk with the Lord. We want to build them up in that relationship with Jesus through things like small group Bible studies, one-on-one -on -one mentoring and discipleship, uh, various conferences and retreats like our upcoming fall retreat. Um, and then thirdly is send. And this, this is a little bit different for a, maybe a typical campus ministry. We want to send students out into the world um, that they would see themselves as God's ambassadors. And not just beyond graduation, but even while they're here as a college student, that they would not just primarily think that they are a college student who happens to be a Christian we want to kind of switch their focus that they would consider themselves first and foremost a follower of Christ who for these four or five years just happens to be a college student. And that kind of flips their mentality on campus that, man, I'm, I'm, I'm a follower of Jesus on this campus. What does that mean? I'm, I'm God's ambassador to my hallmates or my classmates or my friends or even, even my professors. And so we want to send, send our students to the campus and beyond graduation into the world to kind of repeat that process of disciple making, of winning and building and sending folks to the Lord. So, you know, we as a, as a church, we support uh, InterVarsity, we support crew in several locations here in Virginia, uh, James Madison, um, at Radford with the Campus Outreach. Um, so there's, there's different groups that we're supporting. And, you know, we get a lot of information back uh, from the, the missions, missionaries as they're out in the field. And one of the things that we um, that I noticed in a recent newsletter was that that crew for the crew staff, it's really important for those students when they first show up on campus as freshmen. Those first couple of weeks are really important. Can you talk a little bit about why that's important? What it is that you're you're seeing in in terms of the students coming on campus? Sure. Yeah. I mean, from from the first minute that a student steps out of their car and into their dorm on campus, there's this comparison game that begins. They start comparing themselves to. Uh, those around them, the guys are checking out what, what girls are around and, and vice versa. And, and this is this comparison game and there's this competition for their hearts and for their minds on the college campus that everybody wants a piece of these incoming freshmen. And they're kind of bombarded by what the world wants for them and what their parents want for them and what the professors and their friends want out of them. And so the competition that they feel, the, the stress that can be on them immediately out of the gates is, is really, really high. For me as a college student at James Madison University, I succumbed to that and um, and got on a very unhealthy trajectory for my life. And so we want to engage the students from, from the get-go, that first day they get on campus to, like I said earlier, to welcome them into this community of genuine followers of Christ. They've, maybe they've been in the church, they step on campus, and they don't really know who they're going to belong with, uh, where they're going to plug in. We want to offer them that community that's going to encourage them um, to continue and to strengthen that walk with the Lord rather than the opposite, of to push them away. So it's very easy for a student to get swept up um, and carried, carried, carried away from uh, the faith. So it's really kind of who they become those first few days, those first few weeks may very well be who they become for the next four years and maybe even for their life. So we want to try to, with the gospel, kind of graciously intersect that trajectory and redirect it towards the Lord. So, so I couldn't help but notice, you know, the, the video that was up talking about parenting and raising up your children. So when those children leave, you know, the, these are the folks that we're hoping that your students will be seeking out when they show up on campus. Yeah. Okay, Brandon, also, you know, there's, even though CREW provides a lot of leaders like yourself and Chris on campus, there's a concept with CREW that it's a student-led ministry. What's the dynamic you're trying to achieve through a student-led yeah. ministry? Yeah, well, uh, we, we realize that on campus, CREW is not the church. And after, after four or five years on campus, 
students aren't going to have crew staff there to kind of hold their hands and, and walk them around through the rest of their life. And so what we really want to do is develop Christians on campus who know how to walk with Jesus and to help others learn how to know and walk with Jesus. And so part of student leadership is to really give them a piece of that, to, to help them to own parts of the ministry, help them so that, so that when they graduate that they can move up to Mechanicsville or move up to D.C. or wherever they're going to move, um, that they could walk into a church and be someone who's competent, who knows how to walk with Jesus, who knows how to lead in the area and serve. And basically, we want to build up competent future church members um, through what we do on the, on the campus. Also, it's very strategic to have a student-led ministry. As, as we get students to lead and own parts of the ministries, say at VCU, that frees up our staff team here locally. We're, we're entrusted with all eight campuses here in the metro area, eight campuses and 75,000 college students. And so to, re, to raise up student leaders at VCU would enable people like Chris and I to then come up and spend some time at Randolph-Macon to try to launch a new campus ministry or down to Virginia State or Virginia Union to launch a crew ministry there. So student leadership is also very strategic just for uh, advancing the gospel here in Richmond and around the state of Virginia and around the world. So, Chris, um, we've known each other for a while. Yeah. You, you served at Virginia Tech. You've served at Madison. You also served in Australia. And for the last year, you've been here in Richmond. So this ministry that you have here in the Richmond area is a little different than what you've been yeah. uh, serving as in the past. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Um, so the ministry of crew or Campus Crusade for Christ has been around a really long time, and we've seen a lot of success, so much so that at some point in our history, we've been in nearly every single country in the entire world, which just let that th sink in for a second. Like, that means that there's been a, a gospel presence of people in nearly every single country throughout the world. That's a pretty amazing thing. And in Crew, we've done this really great job of um, kind of spanning cultures overseas and, and um, yeah, crossing cultures overseas. But we haven't always done the best job of, here, uh, of doing that here in our own country. So as Brandon mentioned, there's eight campuses uh, that uh, the Richmond Crew staff team looks at as uh, kind of within their scope. And there's about 70,000 or so students in that. And what's interesting is uh, around 35,000 of them are ethnic minorities. Asian American, Latin American, some Native American, um, African American, and that's our current reality. But what's unfortunate and tragic is you, um, you know, we've, we've been doing this the last 10 years with campus ministries, and um, many that I've launched and been a part of don't really reflect that campus demographic within the ministries, um, which is kind of a tragic thing. So that, that spans even like Young Life, Crew, InterVarsity, Campus Outreach, RUF, all of these different kind of ministries don't necessarily reflect the demographic of the campus. And um, that's not to, not to disparage the work. Um, we praise God for, for the way that God is reaching people like Brandon and I and, and many, many others. Um, it's not to disparage our work or, or um, the work of others. But if we really do care about every student um, knowing Christ and being introduced to him, then... Um, we probably need to expand a little bit of, of what we're doing. So um, I basically have the privilege to answer the question. I, I have the privilege of helping provide leadership um, in reaching American ethnic minorities. And there's two kind of primary ways that I've been doing that. One is locally, um, as Bobby mentioned, here in Richmond, I've been working with something called Destino, uh, which is a um, contextualized ministry at VCU um, that basically uses the Christian values from Hispanic and Latino culture and extends the gospel to the campus. So I disciple a number of students within that and then with some of the other crew staff on uh, the team Brandon leads, uh, help coach that team to reach the campus. And the second way is our, in a regional capacity, um, there's a lot of talk of multi-ethnic, that's a word you'll hear a lot in evangelical circles and uh, it's kind of the idea that we want to um, we want people that are, are different, um, that come from different backgrounds, to come together and worship God together. And as we do that, there will be this apologetic or this testimony of God um, to the world, to the watching world, that, hey, like Christ brings people together. And I think that's a really good thing. And one of the things I've been doing is visiting different campus staff teams to help them think through how do we do this multi-ethnic thing that we're moving towards in a healthy way, in a, in a way that's actually productive and good and, um, 
and helps amplify human dignity in other people. So um, I've been doing that at places like UVA and JMU and a number of other campus visits. And then I also meet with uh, regularly with a number of individuals that are thinking through this themselves. So, yeah. Okay, next question is for Chris also. Uh, we know with crew, testimony and testimony development is a big emphasis. In fact, anybody here that's ever gone to Can't Hope, we're given the crew uh, guidelines on how to develop our testimony uh, before we participate. So can you share with us a testimony from a student that just ha shows what the impact is of crew on some of the young college students? Sure, we could do this all day, and I have two minutes, but um, uh, I wrote down a couple of things so I don't go too long on this. So I wish I had more than two minutes to basically share Irwin's story, but Irwin, just a few years ago, Ir Irwin was a student, college student at George Mason University in Fairfax, Virginia, where I'm from, and uh, Erwin, although he grew up in the church, uh, he kind of realized during his freshman year as, while interacting with some other crew students that he hadn't really accepted Jesus into his life. He wasn't really living a life that um, was pleasing to Christ and, and had accepted the forgiveness that he offers. So um, this, the summer after his freshman year, he uh, placed his faith in Christ. He started getting more involved with crew and then also his local church in Fairfax, and right away he realized that his journey was a little bit different than many of the other Christians that um, he was interacting with. He, though I can't share a lot of the details, um, he came from, uh, he was the son of two Ecuadorian uh, immigrants who really struggled, and there was a lot of trauma and a lot of different things that he had to go through and Jesus had to work on through vulnerable Christian community uh, in his life that first year or two after coming to Christ. But as, as Jesus was really pressing in his heart for uh, Latin America and um, for his, his culture and people on his campus really grew. And um, he launched a Destino movement similar to the one at VCU at George Mason uh, to reach the campus through Christ. And as a result of basically these weekly meetings that they had called Vida, uh, Vida and Comida, which is like li life and food, and then small, small group Bible studies, those are the things, life and food, that's, that's what college is about. But um, several students that came to Christ, um, Erwin, he joined part-time staff with Crew a few years ago, and then he's been working with Destino at George Mason University. Richard, he's a, student, uh, he's a Latino student uh, at George Mason. He's about to join staff with, with Crew as a result of this, and they've seen like close to a dozen people come to Christ. Um, through this ministry. And I, th I think it's pretty cool, kind of to the question that, you know, dozens of people have been built up in their faith. A bunch of people have come to Christ a lot because there was one student uh, that had a heart for a people, his, his own people, and really went after that. And he trusted Jesus for his campus. And it's a, it's a pretty cool kind of thing. It's just a great example of how God can use our unique makeup, our giftings, and our passions really for his glory and to bring people to himself. So I connect with Irwin now and He's, uh, he's going to be with the C.S. Lewis Institute, which is his second passion, apologetics. And, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty exciting, the things that he's doing. And we're starting to see that kind of stuff at VCU, which is cool. Yeah. Guys, we appreciate you coming this morning. Uh, appreciate what you do in the ministry field. Um, you know, I, I've seen firsthand uh, what crew is about in the other campus ministries. And we just thank you for all that you do. Appreciate it. You know, it is very important what they do. Um, I went through some multi-generation training at work and found out the uh, millennials is the largest uh, group, even bigger than the baby boomers. And I've also read recently the, that only 15% of them are Christians. So the work that they do on the college campuses is really, really important.